microphone or a sneeze attack happens, I have acquired the skill in life of getting really good at getting sinus infections. Um, and this week was one of those lucky weeks. Um, I'm feeling better than I was a few days ago, but I apologize. When those sneeze attack hits, my boys and Jess will tell you they're no joke. And it's usually four or five, so don't, don't wait for me. Or, yeah, it, it'll feel like that timer while I'm sneezing. So I apologize for sniffles and such. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for this chance to hear your word this morning. May we set aside any distractions. May we be moved and changed by your word. Personally, I ask that the words that I speak are yours and not mine, and that the Holy Spirit is present here. It's in your name we pray. Amen. This morning, our second lesson comes from Luke 2, 22 through 40. That can be found on page... 833 in your pew Bible. Again, Luke 2, 22 through 40. Hear these words from the book that we love. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you're dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then, then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever had an experience or been somewhere or maybe at an event or just had a moment in life that seemed to hit all your emotions at once? You were both happy and sad, joyous, maybe filled with a little anger, but like it hit all of them somehow at once. Think about weddings sometimes that can happen. Somebody might be missing from that wedding or there might be some family pain at an otherwise joyous occasion. I think of funerals. I always think 
it's weird. Sometimes I walk away from funerals feeling a little bit lighter, having shared stories and laughed, recreating memories of the one we loved who had passed on. For me, I think of one particular amazing day. I hope it was amazing for Jess, too, because it was our wedding day. It was in January of 2002. It was awesome. A day filled with family and friends. A day to celebrate together. But, A day with some tears, too. A day for me, just 14 months before that, in November of 2000, my grandfather had passed away. He was one of my heroes. His whole family was there. I was the first of all the cousins to get married. Everybody was there. And he's the kind of guy that would have celebrated that. He might have been the star of the show, in fact. He was a big personality. He'd have been throwing out handshakes and hugs to everybody that was there. A joyous guy. And I missed him that day. I still see the family photos when there's 30 plus of us. All my mom's side of the family was there, except for one person. That six foot three white haired giant of a guy wasn't there. I celebrate that day still. Our 23rd anniversary comes up. Or 22nd, excuse me. Gosh. In just a few days on the 12th of January. But there's just a twinge of sadness still. Because he died so unexpectedly. I imagine that that kind of mix of emotions to be true for Anna and Simeon too. You see, but on a much greater scale. So as we read this passage from Luke, we get a great sense of joy and peace for both of them. Peace for Simeon, joy for Anna. But there's that one little moment in this story where Simeon has to break some bad news. Telling Mary that the ending of this story may not be pretty. That Mary, your soul will be pierced by a sword. He doesn't get too specific, but we know the ending of the story. We have the end of the story, just a few pages on. Simeon, having received that word, knows what the end of the story is going to be. So while he's at peace, knowing that salvation has come, his eyes have seen salvation, there is also pain in the occasion. I just want to spend a few minutes digging into who Simeon and Anna are. Who is this old gentleman, Simeon, who is bringing both words of great peace and a little bit of despair. As the writer Luke says, Simeon's older, he's on in years, but has received a word that he will get to see the Savior, the Messiah, with his own eyes. He will meet him before he passes away. I don't know about you, but if I receive that word, I'm a lot more impatient than I even was when that timer was going off. They had waited hundreds and hundreds of years, generations, to receive that blessing that Lou read about in Isaiah. Salvation is coming, a Messiah is coming to make all things right. 
I can't imagine waiting for that word. Let me read you a couple paragraphs from Frederick Beekner's book, Peculiar, Peculiar Treasures, Six, or a, a Biblical Who's Who. Beekner can be hard to read, but I find this to be his most accessible book for someone like me. It's just short paragraphs or pages about characters from the Bible. So here are these words that Beekner writes about Simeon. Jesus was still in diapers when his parents brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as the custom was, and offer a sacrifice. That's when old Simeon spotted him. Years before, he'd been told he wouldn't die till he'd seen the Messiah with his own two eyes. And the time was running out. When the, when the moment finally came, one looked through his cataract lenses was all it took. He asked if he would be all, if it would be all right to hold the baby in his arms, and they told him to go ahead, but be careful not to drop it. The Lord now lettest thou servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation, he said the baby playing with the fringes of his beard. The parents were pleased as punch, and so he blessed them too for good measure. Then something about the mother stopped him, and his expression changed. What he saw in her face was a long way off, but it was there so plainly he couldn't pretend. A sword will pierce through your soul, he said. He would have rather bitten off his tongue than said it. But in that holy place, he felt he had no choice. Then he handed her back the baby and departed in something less than the perfect peace he had dreamed of all the long years of his waiting. Simeon knows who that child is. The spirit had led him there. The waiting was over. The child is the reason for joy, hope, and peace. But even with all that, with all the years of waiting now ended, it came with a bit of pain. Because Simeon had seen what the future was going to bring. And who was Anna? Anna was a prophet who lived in the temple by day and by night. She worshiped, she fasted, she prayed. This was by no means the norm of the day. She was unique. She was devout. She's, a, she's spiritually active and acute, and she was quick to recognize the child for who he was. She would see kids all the time in the temple. Infants came and went. It was the custom for them to come and be blessed in the temple, to be purified and dedicated. It was the norm. So it was not unique for her to see a child come into the temple but on this blessed occasion, she knew something was different. She was a prophet, and the Spirit told her, this is the one. This is the one. She knew right away who this child was. And you see, at this young age, Jesus was already very good at getting this reaction. We think before he was even born with Elizabeth. With Zechariah, we see after his arrival, the shepherds, angels, the magi react with great joy. And now, with Simeon and Anna, Jesus evokes this same reaction. This is the one we've been waiting for. This is our salvation. He should bring that reaction to all of us. 
for them. They had waited so long for a Savior, for the Messiah. The Greek word for salvation is soterion, which means defender or defense. The Savior has come. The hope of the future salvation was among the people. The one who defends, the defender, the one who saves, the Redeemer, the Savior, was there. Breathing the same air as Simeon and Anna. This was the reason to be filled with peace and joy. Salvation was there before the eyes of Simeon and Anna. I think so often we as followers of Christ discount what salvation means. We oversimplify it. Perhaps it's the way that Jesus manages our sin for us so that we can spend eternal life with God. Don't get me wrong, that is amazing. It is incredible and an amazing gift, a mind-boggling act of grace. But salvation is more. Salvation is both for now and the future. So often in Advent, we speak of the already, but not yet. Jesus already came, but has not returned to redeem all things and make all things new. In the not yet salvation, as we wait for things to become fulfilled, salvation feels a bit abstract. It's out there for the future, for another day. When that time comes in our life. But salvation is for now. Jesus is a reason for hope, for peace, for joy, and for love as we celebrated in Advent. Jesus is here to offer us something new, a better way of living. Not just for us as individuals, for us as a whole, for us as a whole, the world. Something countercultural. There's joy in living a salvation life. Just as there's joy in eternal salvation. So as we wait like Simeon and Anna, as we wait for all things to be made new, know and trust that salvation has already arrived. And it is for all times and for all peoples. And it came with a cost. A cost Simeon hinted at. It came with a great cost. Salvation is bigger than our minds and feeble imaginations can understand. It came with the cost of Jesus dying on the cross for us. So let's not limit salvation. Let's not make it small. It's big. Bigger than we can understand. And it came with a cause that puts a twinge of sadness in this story. We all need that salvation. And it has come from Jesus Christ who we celebrate this Christmas season. The one who came in the form of a humble child Just like Simeon and Anna, we recognize Jesus as the Savior. Like Simeon, we should feel peace because we know that the child will be the light of the world for the people of Israel and the Gentiles. For all of us, a light has come as a gift. We should be at peace because the darkness cannot extinguish this light that comes from Christ. And like Anna, we should be filled with joy and sing praises to God because salvation and redemption have come. Like Anna, we should be speaking to all who are looking for redemption and salvation because we we know that both now, that both come, both redemption and salvation come through that that 40 day old child who was presented that day in the temple. So as you leave this place in a little while, I hope you leave with joy and peace of God, knowing that our salvation has come. 
and as my hope that we will tell everyone who is seeking redemption about the Christ child who came for our salvation. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son, the Messiah, our Redeemer, our Savior. It hurts us to know that that came with a cost. May we never discount salvation 